Yeah, Jonathan, your turn. Well, first of all, Yaron, thank you for all these uh, heroic shows you've been doing lately, especially on the GameStop issue. Thank really you. unique, interesting perspective. And as you said, uh, you know, you're you're providing a voice that no one else out there is, and, and a rational voice. Rand makes a big thing about um, the difference between political and economic power. And one element of the GameStop story that I thought was so interesting was the, as you pointed out, an investment in a hedge fund that lost a lot of money. Melvin Capital lost a lot of money and basically investors, it, but it got played as a quote bailout. Yep. And it, I've heard from a lot of people on social media, I didn't get bailed out like this hedge fund got bailed out. It made me think, you know, there's no distinction now in the public's mind between political power and economic power. And I thought maybe you could speak a bit to that. No, absolutely. I mean, political power being the power of the gun, uh, economic power being the power of trade. And as you know, I mean, I, I, as we can imagine, Melvin got two and a half billion, 2.75 billion from uh, Citadel and 0.72. We know Point 72 and Citadel didn't just give Melvin the money. They didn't just lend Melvin the money. They basically took a chunk of Melvin's business. They, you know, if this was any other business, people would be upset because Citadel and Point 72 exploited Melvin's, um, what do you call it, uh, bad situation to, to, to take a big piece of equity, right? To, to, to take a piece of it. But because it's finance, it's a bailout, right? Uh, but if it had been any other business, they would have, it would have been an exploitation. Because I'm sure that uh, Melvin got out, you know, Melvin got clobbered but, and Citadel in Point 72 came out way ahead on that deal. The fact is Melvin is a very successful hedge fund. The guy who runs it is a veteran of the hedge fund business and has been very successful. Uh, he was a protege of um of the guy who runs citadel uh and and uh, that's part of why the connection there i think um so that's one sense in which there was no there was no bailout there was an investment an investment on terms very 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 good to point 72 in citadel and it strikes me as bizarre that these people who are so anti-hedge funds are somehow think that these hedge funds would bail out another hedge fund and bailout being uh, you know, I don't know, a bailout, think about what a bailout is. A bailout is the government takes taxpayer money, gives it to bankers or gives it to a company with no expectation of any kind of return or any kind of profit. Believe me, Citadel and Point 72 expect a profit and a return for the money they put in. Well, and, and I think this is it, and I don't want to monopolize the time, but that it's, it's the concept. There's a, um, a, a package deal here because we're including bailouts like when government bailed out private businesses yep. with a a recapitalization i think is how you described it you know yep. it would be the, uh, and um a pr of private money and in the in too many people's mind now there's no distinction between a, a private property and so-called public property economic power and and uh and, absolutely uh, and, and, and you're power, absolutely right it's, it's being used as a package deal it's being used to connote something that doesn't belong at all. Uh, a bailout is when a government, uh, when a government is um, is using taxpayer money to uh, allocate taxpayers' money to private business, right? When the buy, when the private business is in trouble, that's a bailout. Uh, they they, they, you know, you can't. I can't even imagine what a bailout would look like in a private context. There is no such thing as an investment. There's a gift, there's a charitable contribution, but there's no bailout. Bailout requires government to take taxpayer money and, and give it away. So there's purposeful confusion between public and private. And I think absolutely right, Jonathan, there's purposeful confusion between political and economic power, because when you have that confusion, it, it justifies more government intervention, more government involvement. And of course, that's what's going to result from this. I mean, you can see both AOC and Ted Cruz agree that government has to do something about what is going on in financial markets. And, and Isn't it amazing the uh, this ubiquitous uh, hatred from the left and the right of hedge funds now? Particularly for anything with the finance they hate, and particularly hedge funds because they're successful and they're big. Um, so uh, and they make money, and um, 
yeah, truly, truly uh, stunning. Well, not not surprising at all. Not surprising. And, uh, and the, more uh, more specifically, they're they're seeing um, short selling as somehow predatory. Across the board, everybody is seeing this as predatory. Like, well, that's true. That's been true for a long time. Short sellers have always have always been viewed as villains. During the two thousand eight crisis, there was a period where short selling was banned. They literally didn't allow short selling, um, and and to this day, and they made short selling more difficult. So to this day, it, it it's more difficult to short sell. It was already difficult before the financial crisis. So uh, no, short selling has always been viewed negatively. Um, you know, betting on somebody failing is un-American, I'm told, um, and, uh, and 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 therefore needs to be restricted and stopped. But does that uh, mean everyone who goes to a uh, closing soon sale is a predator? <laughs> well, it, it, no, it's not exactly the same because your actions are not helping the closing happen. So um, if you stop going to the store because you don't like it. And it fails because you're not shopping there. That would be more of what I think they think of. Or, um, but but yes, it's it's. Well, and, and just quickly for the record, hedge funds are always blamed. They were blamed for supposedly ginning up oil prices in the mid two thousands and they crashing the. Too low. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it's all you know. They're always to blame. They're profit seeking, and uh, uh, it seems to be that's why. Unfortunately, historically, there was actually one semi bailout of a hedge fund. And I mentioned this uh, the other day on the show, and that was a 1998 long term capital, which had positions that were leveraged. I can't remember if it was 90 to one or 95, some ridiculous amount. And they would have been fine, but because of the Asian financial crisis, there was suddenly all prices moved in the, all at once together. And they just got wiped out. They got wiped out. And Alan Greenspan, the famous Alan Greenspan, who unfortunately is associated with Ayn Rand, brought all the uh, bankers and the kind of big hedge funds into his office and basically said to them, you know, I'm not going to bail these guys out, but you guys should. You guys should really do it. I'm, I'm suggesting, says the man with the, uh, you know, bazooka pointed at your face. I'm suggesting that you bail these guys out. And indeed, they did bail out long-term capital. I mean, long-term capital ultimately closed. Um, but they bailed them out. And uh, that was the beginning of a lot of regulation, a lot of pressure to regulate, and maybe the entrance of this idea that you could that hedge funds are being bailed out. But, but in fact, of all the industries out there, Hedge funds are at least likely to be bailed out. They're, they have, a, I mean, do you remember the days, Jonathan, where, where hedge funds were likely regulated, or if at all? I mean, uh, in the early 90s, in the late 80s, there was barely any regulation on hedge funds. And today, I mean, it's, it's pathetic how much regulations you have and what you can and cannot say and how you have to uh, comport yourself. And I mean, particularly if you register with the SEC, which you have to if you manage assets above a certain size, it just gets to be a nightmare. And, and it's taken a lot of the fun out of the industry. Uh, out of uh, I know a, a number of hedge fund guys who have retired because it's just not as much fun because, because the, the, the regulations are so heavy. All right, thank you, Jonathan. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think meaning any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see, see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a, click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. 
it's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share and uh, you can support the show at yourunbookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value hopefully you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if, you, even if you just come here to troll or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified, right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please. <laughs>